baby shark. Well, of course, you see my logo, it's actually my golf shirt. It has a shark on it too. But actually, I don't love sharks that much. Do you? Okay. Anyways, what happened in Munich recently, Munich, Germany, should have happened a long time ago. But it finally did happen, and I'm really happy it did and grateful for it, and that's why I'm bringing the good news to you at VFI. Let me summarize for some of you who are not even born at this time. On September 5th, 1972, eight terrorists from the group called Black September went into Olympic Village in Munich and took hostage Israeli athletes and some representatives of the team. Security in those days was not the same as post 9-11, but they demanded the release of Palestinian Arab prisoners in Israel and elsewhere held around the world by other countries. The whole of the rescue attempt failed. The German police and army did not even allow the Israeli security, special security forces to become involved who had already great experience in anti-terror actions. And as a result, 11 Israeli athletes were killed and one West German police officer. May I also add for the record that today's president, Mahmoud Abbas, a known Holocaust denier, in fact, that was his thesis in university, and now even under investigation by the German police after his recent visit to Germany, was one of the masterminds of this massacre. What's worse is that he and the Palestinian Authority today is receiving millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to the tune of $500 million a year. So I have read by now and approved President Joe Biden and his administration. By the way, it was former President Trump who shut down financial support to Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinian Authority, also known as Fatah. Today, Mahmoud Abbas is chairman of both the Palestinian Authority and of its main faction called Fatah. Quoting from a source, the autobiography of the late Mohammed Uday, better known as Abu Daoud, named Abbas as one of the three senior officials of Fatah who assisted Daoud in planning the Munich massacre. Fatah, under the leadership of Arafat and Mahmoud Abbas, was the parent body of Black September. To sum it all up, Fatah was responsible for the Munich massacre. That's a fact. Also in the book of Abu Daoud, who was the mastermind, he wrote, quote, after Oslo in 1993, Abu Mazen, who's also called Mahmoud Abbas, went to the White House Rose Garden for a photograph with Yasser Arafat, President Bill Clinton, Israel's Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, and Shimon Peres, the then foreign minister. A lesson to be learned. Appeasement only brings us that much closer to war and terror, and it's been proven out after four terms of Mahmoud Abbas in power, who has not called for elections, so much for freedom. Now, it was Jim McKay, who was an ABC sports correspondent who covered the events at the Olympics, who said on television, quote, our greatest hopes and our worst fears are seldom realized. Our worst fears have been realized tonight. They've now said that there were 11 hostages. Two were killed in their rooms yesterday morning. Nine were killed at the airport tonight. They're all gone. And many people wept that night. Jim Murray of the LA Times wrote at the time, incredibly, they are all going on with it meaning the Olympic Games. It's almost like having a dance at Dachau. The German president, Frank Walter Steinmeier, in his speech said these words, I ask you as the head of the state of this country and on behalf of the Federal Republic of Germany for forgiveness for the lack of protection of the Israeli athletes during the Olympic Games in Munich and for the lack of clarification afterwards, for the fact that what happened could have happened. Today, 50 years on, many questions, far too many questions, remain unanswered. From planning to execution, the Germans totally screwed up the rescue efforts. We look back after tragedies to try and assess what one could have done. I remember, in fact, what happened on my first visit to Israel in 1974 while on my way stopping with a friend in Munich, Germany to meet some folks who have become friends ever since. You know, I'll never forget showing up at the airport, leaving from Munich. Now, this is about a year and a half after the Olympic massacre in 1972. 
And as we entered the airport, all flights to Israel for Jews were separated to another terminal surrounded by the military and sandbags with a machine gun perched on top. As we were completely searched and walked out accompanied to the plane by the military, we boarded the steps and I noticed all around us a ring of military soldiers, German soldiers, with a tank on one side and a half track on the other. As the plane took off for Israel, we saw the tank on one side and the half track on the other as we took off for Israel and landed a few hours later. And believe me, when I arrived in Israel, I kissed the ground and knew I had arrived home. It was a weird feeling, an ominous moment, but I'm so happy that the president of Germany has asked forgiveness and I, for one, believe it was very sincere and we should receive those words kindly. Now, continuing with the president of Germany's words, quote, honored family members, I cannot fathom what suffering, what pain you've been through and how life can really go on. For five decades, that gnawing pain has been within you. Now, our president Herzog, the president of Israel, somebody I've gotten to really like, he thanked President Steinmeier and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz for taking responsibility. They reached a compensation deal of $28 million to the surviving family members before the very day of the commemoration. Some of President Herzog's speech and words are as follows. Why must my pain be endless and my wound incurable resistant to healing? So asks the prophet Jeremiah chapter 15. And so we ask today, even 50 years after the horrific murder of the 11 Israeli athletes here, and in the Munich Olympic Village with inconceivable cruelty and in cold blood, the pain is eternal. That awful event remains a wound resistant to healing. For us as a people and as a country, this massacre has always been a national disaster. It desecrated the unifying and cohesive sanctity of the Olympics, the ultimate symbol of sports, and smeared its flag with blood. The Olympic flag with its five rings would never again be what it was before. The world must never forget what happened at the 1972 Munich Olympics. The world must never forget the war on terror. Everywhere and always must be fought with unity, determination, and assertiveness. At the end of President Herzog's trip, he went to visit the concentration camp called Bergen-Belsen. His father, Chaim Herzog, who was the sixth president of Israel, helped liberate the camp in April 1945 as a British officer. My own very father, who passed away in 2017, bless his memory. He fought as a high-ranking officer in a reconnaissance unit in World War II and would share the events that transpired mostly in the latter years of his life. Having fought at the Battle of the Bulge and in the second assault during D-Day, we have great respect for the veterans and the soldiers who fought in World War II. Wouldn't it be great if on the way to Israel, we can organize a few days together, yes, you watching VFI News and myself, and go to Germany as a testimony and as a learning experience on many subjects from history and what to do concerning anti-Semitism. Write me if you're interested. Yes, write me at info at visionforisrael.com or leave your comments here at YouTube. Yes, sir, I'd love to hear from all of you. We must pass on what we can to the next generations. This is Barry from VFI News.